A Republican senator recently called a CNN reporter, Manu Raju, a liberal hack. And his colleagues in the media had a meltdown. McSally just calls Manu Raju, respected widely on Capitol Hill by Democrats and Republicans, calls him a, a nasty name. Prize-winning, uh, excellent journalist. There's nobody who looks at him uh, with a real objective lens and sees anything but objectivity. This is not uh, a biased reporter. But CNN hosts can call Donald Trump a racist, not a problem. There is an unmistakable racial element to this story. And that's why I come down on the side of covering this and covering it big. The awkward subtext is a question we asked a few weeks ago on this program. Is President Trump a racist? Why is it that the president was seeming to go after African-American athletes over the weekend? He went after Colin Kaepernick at that rally in Alabama Friday night. Tom Brady did not make it here to the White House when the New England Patriots made it. There were no angry tweets from the president directed at Tom Brady uh, or other athletes. I don't think it's a stretch to say that is a bit of a dog whistle that is being played out there. <laughs> but how dare you call our reporter a liberal hack? And if she, oh. if she should do the right thing, she should call up Manu Raju, Absolutely. apologize right. to Manu Raju. I agree, Will. I misspoke. Sure. I'm sorry I did that. Uh, and, misspoke. You know, and, and then uh, no, whatever it, she it, says. Know exactly and then she, she should issue saying. a public statement. Right. Uh, oh, that's sweet. Apologize. She won't. That's, just, that's sweet. Yeah. She will mention. She will I wish I that. lived in that world. Yeah. 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 That's the right thing to do. <laughs> she made a well, does she take it back? Senator. Do you regret what you said? Uh, no, Laura, I do not. And I said it again, actually, as I went in. I said, you're a liberal hack, buddy. As you know, I, I mean, these, these CNN reporters, but many of them around the Capitol, uh, they are so biased. Uh, they are so in cahoots with the Democrats. They so can't stand the president. And they run around trying to chase, you know, Republicans and ask trapping questions. I'm a fighter pilot. You know, I called it like it is. Uh, and that's what we see out of the mainstream media and especially CNN every single day. Uh, so obviously, uh, I'm going to I'm going to tell the truth and I did it today and it's laughable how they've responded. Well, they were saying maybe just maybe the senator has grounds to be skeptical about CNN. After all, didn't Project Veritas capture president and CEO Jeff Zucker in the act of telling his minions to pursue anti-Trump stories? Jeff Zucker. Yeah. Basically, president of CNN. Has a personal vendetta against Trump. It's not going to be positive for Trump. He hates oh, him. Yeah. He's going to be negative. He's known Trump for a long time. Like, they worked together back during The Apprentice. So. And hates his guts. If he's the story, I know we're going to have to go to Tennessee to think we're doing too much, but he's the story. He sold himself to the devil. It's sad. Let's start the uh, anti Trump crusade. Now, about the senator's diss of Manu Raju. CNN's Chris Cuomo has his back. The question yeah. is, will senators in his party be the same way? That's <clears> what was so upsetting about McSally today. This is a woman with an oh, amazing man. record of service to this country, and she really acted like a punk. Wow. A punk. I guess Chris Cuomo would be an expert. Do you remember when he had that encounter with the gentleman who called him Fredo? Call me Fredo. It's like I call you You like that? You want oh, that to be I, your nickname? I didn't call you that. I you called me Fredo. I you know my name's not Fredo. I thought your name was. You did not think my name was Fredo. Don't be a liar. I, thought you I want to be a man. Stand That's up like a man. Good. My name is Chris Cuomo. I'm an anchor on CNN. Oh, you're much Fredo is from the Godfather. He was that weak brother. Isn't that your And they use it as an Italian aspersion. Any of you Italian? Oh, Are you Italian? I got, I got a little it's an insult to your people. It's an insult to your people. It's like the N-word for us. Come with you, man. Yeah, you're going to have a problem. What? What are you going to do about it? Ruin throw you down these stairs like a and maybe, just maybe, the senator is simply acknowledging the obvious media bias. Joan Walsh is a editor of a left-wing publication called Salon.com. She covered the 2008 campaign, and here's what she said about her fellow reporters. I was struck when I got to Iowa and New Hampshire in January by how our media colleagues were just swooning over Barack Obama. That is not too strong a word. And about CNN in particular, check out this exchange between CNN's Wolf Blitzer 
and former CNN employee Lynn Cheney. Lynn Cheney came on to talk about her book, and then things sort of went south. I of a man who uh, had a bookstore in London where radical Islamists gathered, uh, who was in Afghanistan when the Taliban were there, who went to Pakistan. Uh, you know, I, I think that you might be a little careful before you declare this as a person with uh, clean hands. You're referring to the CNN broken government I special. This am. was the one that John well, King you know, reported right there, on last right night. Right there, Wolf, broken government. Now, what, what kind of stance is that? Here we are. We're a country where we have been mightily challenged over the past six years. We've been through 9-11. We've been through Katrina. The president and the vice president inherited a recession. We're a country where the economy is healthy. That's not broken. This government has acted very well. We've had task, tax cuts that uh, are responsible for our healthy economy. We're a country that was attacked five years ago. We haven't been attacked since. What this government has done is effective. That's not broken government. So, you know, I, I shouldn't let media bias um, surprise me. But I worked at CNN once. I watched you your were, program you last night. And, uh, and I was... I was uh, troubled. All right. Well, well that was uh, probably the uh, the purpose to get people to think, to get people to discuss these issues, because there well, are a lot right, of conservatives. All right. Well, I'm here to talk about my book, but if you want to talk about distortion, we'll, we'll talk about your book. Right. But uh, what is CNN doing? Running terrorist tape of terrorists shooting Americans. I mean, I thought Duncan Hunter asked you a very good question and you didn't answer it. Do you want us to win? The answer, of course, is we want the United States to win. We are Americans. There's no doubt about that. You think we then want terrorists running? to win? But there's why a, are you running terrorist propaganda? With all due propaganda. respect, with all due respect, this is not terrorist propaganda. Oh, this is wolf. this is reporting the news, which is what we do. We're not partisan. Where did you get the film? We got the film. Uh, look, this is an issue that has been widely discussed. This is an issue that we reported on extensively. We make no apologies for showing that. That was a very carefully considered decision. Why? We we did that, and I think, and I think, well, that if I you're, think it's shocking. If, if you're a serious journalist, you want to report the news. Sometimes the news is good. Sometimes the news isn't so good. But, but Wolf, there's a difference between news and terrorist propaganda. Let me offer you another example. You know the longtime anchor of ABC, Peter Jennings, the longtime anchor of NBC, Tom Brokaw, and the longtime anchor of CBS, Dan Rather. Well, they were manning the desks on the first days of the presidencies of Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. In the case of Bill Clinton, he reversed an anti-abortion policy, and in the case of George W., he reversed a pro-abortion policy. But check out how they covered their first day. Peter Jennings. President Clinton kept a promise today on the 20th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision legalizing abortion. Mr. Clinton signed presidential memoranda rolling back many of the restrictions imposed by his predecessors." End of quote. Now on George W. Bush's first day, Peter Jennings, President Bush begins by taking a tough line on abortion. One of the president's first actions was designed to appeal to anti-abortion conservatives. Tom Brokaw, first day of Bill Clinton. Today, President Clinton kept a campaign promise, and it came on the 20th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Tom Brokaw on the first day of George W. We'll begin with the new president's very active day, which started on a controversial note. Dan Rather's first day, Bill Clinton. Today, with a stroke of a pen, President Clinton delivered on his campaign promise. Dan Rather on the first day of George W. This was President Bush's first day at the office, and he did something to quickly please the right flank in his party. You see the point. Bill Clinton kept a campaign promise. George W. Bush moved to please the right flank of his party. Bill Clinton kept a campaign promise. George W. Bush began his first day on a controversial note. Can you say bias? And speaking of reporters named Tom Brokaw, why has Brokaw been given a pass? These allegations were a year ago. Now to those new accusations against another high-profile personality. NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw, a former co-worker coming forward accusing him of sexual misconduct. Eva Pilgrim is here with the latest on all this. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Robin. NBC facing some tough questions this morning on how it's handled sexual harassment claims. Tom Brokaw, now the latest power man at the network, facing allegations. This morning, two women dropping bombshell allegations. But Tom Brokaw wrote a letter denying it all. And now, my goodness, 
Other media personalities have had allegations against them. Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, Tavis Smiley, they're out. But Tom Brokaw, still there, still popping up, still giving his opinion. It must have been one hell of a letter. <laughs> Gentlemen, question mark. Uh, do you want that uh, <clears throat> in the letter? No, put that in an envelope. I'm Larry Elder, and this has been The Larry Elder Show. I'll see you next time.